Helsinki calling. Scotland, Scotland, I believe. Scotland today, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Th thank you for taking the time, and you are now live, and uh, we will have perhaps uh, some five, five, ten minutes. Uh, just to ask you a basic question, Christy, uh, could you tell me why you are in Scotland and not in, in Bethlehem today? <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Um, well, basically, I was born on the West Bank. And um, well, after uh, like two years ago, I started learning lots of um, different things and looking at the situation from di different angles. Uh, well, obviously, I grew up being pulled by the Palestinian curriculum, which is influenced by the Arabs as well. And um, after finding down, uh, finding out lots of um, different point of views and different opinions and different uh, looking at the situation from different angles, I started expressing my own point of view. And um, because my own point of view changed. Uh, uh, and because we don't have uh, freedom of speech, no human rights in that regime, I got threatened to be shot. So I had to leave the country for, uh, to keep myself safe. Hmm. That's why I'm in England now. Okay. Can, can you tell us a little bit about the situation for your, your family right now and the uh, situation from where you fled? Yeah, well, basically, um, the situation is a bit hard because I'm speaking up in this country and it's causing them lots of uh, threats and danger. It's a matter of time that the threats and the danger would be more, uh, would be a, a, lot, a lot more. Um, I'm only relying on God's protection, basically. Um, um, just expressing my point of view that we don't have human rights, we have lack of freedom of speech, the regime is lawless, there is no order, and all of that is still happening, and the government is not changing anything, because they're simply having all the money that people are funding from the EU, the UN, and um, they, they, they won't be wanting to sit and negotiate. Anyway, because they're having all the money, the aid money, that is not uh, that has been given through uh, foreigners. Hmm. How, how can we? I think the overall question here is: How can we best help the Palestinian people, uh, being Europeans and being now here in Helsinki? Well, basically, um, one of the most things important things that you, the European people or the Western mind need to understand the Arabic mindset. We have lots of uh, things in our culture and I'm uh, sad to say so, that. Uh, like for example the Taqiyya law which is uh, uh, from the Sharia. It's in our Arabic culture that enables us to lie and deceive our enemies. So we for our own benefit this important point the people in the west need to understand that's first second um well i have a question to uh, the, the people uh would you if you want to help the drug ad would you give him money mm -hmm. and because that would, I don't think that would help them at all. That would make the situation worse. And this, the second thing, if you want to give money to help, well, at least send some monitors. You can't just send irresponsible uh, aid. It, it doesn't mean that you're helping. It, it means that you're making the situation worse for people who are victims of the whole uh, conflict. Do, do you have uh, practical examples of uh, misuse or, or underst well, understanding of where the money is going? Well, basically, for example, we have lots of aid money that comes from England, uh, 170 in, in, uh, million dollars in three years, a million uh, pounds in three years, and uh, 63 um, 36 million 
uh, found um, uh, to um, uh, people who are in prison. And these money, and some of them, is, uh, has been asked to, uh, to be used for orphans. And these money are not using and um, are not being used for any orphans, for example. Or uh, we had sixty million dollars from the um, uh, EU or the UN for people who had damages because of the wall. My house is the only unique house in the whole West Bank. That situation, we didn't hear anything about the money. Um, lots of uh, people are asking, Palestinians themselves are asking where all the money is going. Because it goes back to Switzerland and Africa, obviously. Mm. Okay. Uh, we will keep it short, so I'll, I'll give you a, a last question and e I'll give you an easy one. So, what is the solution? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me say in. Uh, the beginning that um, we've had two very good days here in Helsinki, very productive days with meetings in the parliament, um, the foreign ministry. We've had a very good uh, contact with the foreign minister himself, showing a real interest in these issues and uh, requesting to have uh, documentation and conclusions from, uh, from this meeting. Uh, and perhaps also to mention that we had a very good meeting this afternoon with Finn Church Aid. Uh, discussing our differences in, in looking at the issue in the Middle East, but doing it in a very warm and, and constructive atmosphere. So we thank you for, for uh, that uh, possibility. Uh, I believe what brings people together who care about the Jewish people is, of course, we care uh, partly because of the Jewish suffering in Europe in particular throughout the centuries. Um, but I believe it's very important because of this passion for suffering people that we are uh, equally concerned about the plight of uh, the Palestinian people or the, uh, the Arab peoples in the, in the region. And uh, even organizing an event like this have caused us some uh, criticism from, from our people because they would say, well, you know, why are you concerned about Palestinian human rights? Um, whereas I believe as a, as a Christian, we are a Christian organization, there is no other uh, alternative but to care. I think the European Union sadly has um, failed in many respects, as Christy was uh, uh, explaining here earlier, have failed to help the Palestinian people in a, in a constructive way. Uh, there is a saying that, you know, we all want to be history makers, but I believe it's very important that if this is the case, that we do end up on the right side of history. And I think the EU, sadly, time and time again, have uh, failed to, uh, or have ended up on the wrong side of, of history. In, in 2005, we made a request, uh, the European Coalition for Israel, we made a very simple or asked a very simple question to the European uh, Commission and Parliament to say well we think it would be a good idea to have a proper accounting of the funds which are going into the Palestinian territories uh, but um, at least in the beginning there was a lot of uh, hesitations into looking into this issue and uh, sadly in retrospect we can say that it was too little too late because by the time that the, the European institutions had agreed to look into it, Hamas had already came into power in, in Gaza, and, and Hamas came into power on an anti-corruption ticket. And I think they were right in that respect, and the European Union even agreed afterwards to say, well, yes, of course, there was massive mismanagement and corruption. But my question is, why did they reach that conclusion only when it was too late? And this is what I mean about uh, ending up on the wrong side of history. And I think just in recent uh, years, we've seen the same things with the so-called Arab Spring. One year, you, you stand side by side by uh, Mubarak and call him a, a, a greatest friend of Europe and the Egyptian people and a great reformer, this and that, or Gaddafi. Uh, and a few months later, you have to delete all your pictures where you're standing together with Mubarak and Gaddafi and all the others. 
And, and I think it's quite symptomatic for the European Union that we've been, for whatever reasons, we've been rather uh, sloppy in, in um, um, monitoring the, the, or identifying who are our friends, who are the true reformers, who are the true human rights advocates in the region. And I think also here I would make the statements which I've done <clears throat> earlier today to say that uh, the solution in the Middle East, which we sadly missed from, from Christie, uh, is not necessarily creating a new uh, repressive um, Islamic radical Palestinian state. Um, I think only to the extent that we can create a, a, a culture of democracy, a, a culture of uh, uh, transparency, a culture where we uh, respect human rights, can we uh, create the foundation of, of uh, having a real process, uh, which I believe should be open-ended, but nevertheless could, where the main trust is to promote the rights of, uh, of the people. Uh, I think I quoted earlier today in a discussion uh, a quote which is quite famous in Brussels, uh, Oli Rehn, our, our previous commissioner for enlargement, who said that um, European Union should be a community of values. What, what this means, of course, is that the values that he's referring to and would call European values are basically universal values which uh, Ina was uh, referring to here in the, in the opening speech. Uh, but the question for us, I believe, is both when it comes to the whole region, to say, well, are these values really being promoted today? Is Libya a more democratic, open society today compared to two years ago? What about Egypt? Uh, what about Syria? Um, to give you an example, the French government um, was to make an official state visit to, to Libya a few weeks ago, and uh, Bernard Henri Lévy, who is a famous philosopher, uh, was to be in the delegation, but uh, from the Libyan side they made it clear that they cannot have a Jew in the French delegation. Um, it, it's not compatible with the values that we are trying to promote in international forums, being the United Nations or the European Union. Uh, we could give many examples of um, respect or major respect, uh, disrespect for, for the most basic human rights in the region. Uh, there's a statement from Mahmoud Abbas to say that in a future Palestinian state there can be no Jews. Uh, I don't agree with that, and I'm going to be very vocal uh, in, in disagreeing. Um, and um, for example, and Kaleb could, could uh, mention this, that selling uh, property to a Jew in, uh, in uh, the Palestinian territories is, is equal to a death sentence. I don't believe these are values and, and uh, principles that we should just, you know, look the other side and say, well, you know, it's, it's a different region. Uh, especially with all the money that we are investing in that uh, re region and in that process. So I think in, in conclusion, um, I want to be very short, that um, the Palestinian people deserve something better. And I, I, I think in particular, um, what we've learned from similar crises in Europe, say the Northern Ireland, is that um, or I think it was J.F. Kennedy who said that peace is not a signature on a piece of paper. Peace starts in your heart. And only to the extent that the culture, the education system, and exactly as you said, uh, is, is, um, um, does allow and promote these values of respect, mutual respect, of dialogue, and, and uh, uh, can we expect something of a change to happen in the, in the region. Um, this was very brief, but, but I think again, in order to have more time to, to go into a dialogue, I will, I will actually end it here, but end with an, uh, stretching out an open hand to anyone who really care, who don't have a political agenda, but care genuinely about the, the plight and the future of the Palestinian people to, to work together to promote these human rights. I believe no one will lose 
the more democratic a Palestinian uh, people and, and territories will become, uh, the better the chance for peace and security and stability in the whole region. Thank you.